We've been studying the biblical doctrine of forgiveness, looking at Paul's letter to Philemon. And in this video, we're going to consider verses 17 to 20 and a message that I'm calling the cost of forgiveness. Now, in this first video, we're going to consider the setup and what this means as Paul illustrates that there is a cost, a cost on both sides that must be considered when we're truly talking about forgiveness. In the first video, we considered the background of this narrative and what I call the case study of forgiveness. That's the story of Philemon. In the second message, we then considered the heart of forgiveness. And then in the third message, we considered the behavior of forgiveness. And in the fourth message, we considered what I called the compensation of forgiveness with the give and take and the nature of a healthy relationship among equals. So now, in this fifth video message, we really need to discuss the cost of forgiveness at a personal level. There is a cost, and we need to consider this. For those of you who have watched the 2003 movie called Luther, about the life of Martin Luther, you'll recall that great scene between Luther and his confessor monk, Johann von Staupitz, where Staupitz is shaving Luther's neck before his big trial at Worms. And he's warning Luther to tread carefully with his words and his actions and tells him he doesn't need to tear the world apart. And then suddenly Luther grabs the wrist of Staupitz with the razor still in his hand and he asks softly yet firmly that day when you sent me out so boldly to change the world, did you really think there wouldn't be a cost? It's a great line. I'm not sure that Luther ever actually said those words. In fact, I'm pretty sure Luther himself never said those words, but it makes us think about the cost. And Luther in that scene is certainly considering the cost of what lies before him. And it reminds us that whenever you and I make great strides for obedience to Christ, there will always be at least a temporal personal cost involved. And this is certainly true when it comes to the matter of forgiveness. So let's consider now what Paul shares with Philemon in this persuasive appeal to address the cost of forgiveness in verses 17 to 20. Listen as I read these words. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you, I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel, but I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion but of your own accord. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever. No longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it, to say nothing of your owing me even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. In the context of a letter about forgiveness, one of the ways to view the matter of cost is to see it as releasing a debt when you have been wronged. So if you're the one who has been hurt and wronged in some way, forgiving them involves releasing that debt, even if it's not a physical, tangible debt. And that would be Philemon's position in this letter. And then on the other side, the cost is sometimes in making restitution, or at least having a desire to make restitution when you have off offended someone or committed the wrong, which would be the position of Onesimus in this letter. 
But there's also the more immediate emotional cost of bypassing our own sinful feelings to release a debt quickly and in a kind and generous way according to God's Spirit. That happens whenever we forgive a debt, even something as small as cutting us off in traffic. And we just have that flash of anger and we need to quickly process it and forgive them. Now, in normal circumstances in Roman society, if a slave had stolen property and then had run away from the master, the damage to that re relationship would be socially irredeemable. Not only that, but the runaway slave would likely have been subject to capital punishment, the death penalty. However, Paul is not going to let this broken relationship go anywhere near that direction. And so in part two of the cost of forgiveness, we're going to consider the two sides of any case of forgiveness and see how it costs both sides in different ways. And we'll also consider what was at stake for Philemon in Colossae if he did not forgive Onesimus. So join me as we come back for the second video on the cost of forgiveness.